CataractCoach.com. How to reposition a toric eye well many months after the original cataract surgery. The key is to carefully free the haptics. So we'll start off with two paracentesis incisions. Notice we're not going to open up the main incision. There's no need. We're keeping the existing lens. We're just going to rotate it into a different meridian. So for whatever reason, this lens is rotated about 9 degrees away of where it needs to be. So we're going to put a little anesthetic. And now we'll put some viscoelastic in the eye. But very importantly, do not overfill the eye. Fill about 50 or 60% fill of viscoelastic. That's it. Because we're going to use more viscoelastic to separate the lens from the capsule bag. And you don't want the AC to be highly pressurized. If you check right now, the IOP is probably in the low single digits. Now going in, we're going to use a needle. You can put the needle bevel down on your dispersive viscoelastic. And you need to get that gently under the capsule edge in both directions. And when you get under there, inject a little aliquot of the viscoelastic because that's going to help tent up that anterior capsule rim. Sometimes hard to get those needles in the paracentesis because they want to create their own track. But you can get it in there. Just try a few more times. So when we get this across, again, we'll inject a little viscoelastic as we get under that edge. You do not want to damage the rectus edge. Remember, this patient has a toric trifocal. You want to keep the toric trifocal. You can't put a sulcus lens in. There's no toric sulcus lens. There's no appropriate trifocal that's also a toric design for the sulcus. So we need to be cautious here. Now that it's opened up a little bit, I'll use my psychodialysis spatula just to help separate the capsular rim from the optic, but also to spread it back a little bit and to open up the anterior and posterior capsule leaflets. You want the, the lens capsule bag to be open out to the equator. And now we can try and lift the lens up, there it is, and try to get the haptics out. Now remember, these haptics on this platform have a bulbous tip. So if it doesn't come out, don't force it. Instead, more viscoelastic to inject and open up the capsule bag. And you can't see out to the equator, but that's how far it needs to be open. You need to open up the capsule bag out to the equator, and that will allow this um, optic to be totally freed. And it's still a little caught there, so now it rotates. And we can pull it up again. There it is. It's totally free. Now we can re-rotate the lens. If there's any resistance here, spend the time to do a little more dissection. So notice how we do this completely through just the two pairs and T's incisions. I'm going to use the spatula again just to make sure it's fully opened up. I felt some resistance there, and I don't want to damage things. Ah, now it's opened up. So now we can get this lens re-rotated into the appropriate position we're aiming for that 180 meridian right there. That looks pretty good. Once you get the lens lined up where you want it, you got to remove the viscoelastic. So we're not going to use coaxial because we don't have the main incision open. We're going to use a biaxial approach or bimanual approach. And you can use a special bimanual set if you have it. If you don't, I'm just using the transformer IA suction device in one hand, and I'll use just a 25-gauge uh, IV cannula in the other for the infusion. So that's what we're doing here, getting that viscoelastic out nice and gently. I'm even going to go behind the optic, and this is why the bimanual instruments are so easy, because it allows you to get behind there. You don't want to leave viscoelastic back there, because that's going to allow the lens to slide around a little bit. And this lens should be pretty stable. It will adhere back down to the capsule bag, though you won't have as much of that shrink wrap effect at this point. Because the capsule bag already went through that fibrotic and shrinking down phase, it may not happen again, but this lens should be stable for this patient. And at the end here, we'll just seal up the incisions, a little bit of hydration, and that's a great result. A little bit of an adjustment if you need to. You can do a little bit of an angle sweep to make sure you don't have any retained viscoelastic in the eye. And then now we can just check the incisions, make sure everything's sealed up and good to go. So that's a very easy way of doing it. Again, the take-home message here really is to be gentle on the capsule bag, don't damage it, and to open up the capsule bag all the way out to the equator to free up the haptics. Now, in some cases, watch this one, you're going to have a hard time. This is a case where I'm having a hard time dissecting this lens out of the capsule bag. So one haptic comes out great, but look what happens here. As I try to get the other haptic, it's stuck. So don't force this at all. Instead, go back in with the spatula and separate. And now try again. Still stuck. 
So go back, more viscoelastic or more spatula. And notice how you made a paracentesis 180 degrees opposite that area just to have great access. Trying again, it's still stuck. Don't damage the designer support here. Go in again. It's nice and gentle. Go all the way out with the, to the equator. And notice how my spatula's rounded off on the tip. And now try one more time. Hey, now it's free. So at this point, yes, now the lens is up out of the capsule bag. You can now reposition it wherever you need to. Or in this case, we're actually going to explant it. But you can definitely reposition a toric lens even months later, not that big of a deal. To explain it, as you know, we're going to do my twist and out technique, which works just like magic. Keep these pearls in mind. If you have a patient who has a torque lens that's rotated and you need to fix it, this is the way to do it. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out cataractcoach.com. I post a new video every single day, more than 1,600 videos to date.